Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India students so in today's lecture we will uh, continue with some examples on Stokes theorem and uh, since today is our uh, last lecture um, I apologize that I couldn't be able to cover more examples on uh, integral calculus section as I uh, promised uh, or showed you in our syllabus but uh, I tried to con co uh, compute as many examples as I could also because the time is very uh, limited and uh, um, because of that uh, sometimes I also had to rush through and uh, uh, maybe uh, on one or two occasions we couldn't be able to do more examples but uh, I suggest you to follow uh, any one of the textbooks or if possible then follow all the textbooks which I suggested in the reference uh, right at the beginning of this course and um, I'm pretty sure there you'll be able to find a lot of examples just for you to practice and uh, uh, get really good at it and um, um, uh, I am also providing uh, a lot of uh, assignments and so try to solve those assignments that will definitely help you clear out uh, your doubts and uh, would also help you to become uh, how to say uh, very good at this particular subject. Um, so today let us start with our uh, with our last topic which is uh, Stokes theorem and uh, I am going to solve some examples and uh, let us do that. So. verify Stokes theorem for f equals to two x minus y times i minus y z square j minus y square z K, where S is the upper half or upper half surface of the sphere C is its boundary. So, what we have basically is a sphere and uh, we have to verify the Stokes theorem on the upper half of that sphere. So, that means uh, um, if you consider let us say x axis, y axis and z axis then it will it we can consider um, the upper half as uh, um, from z equals to 0 till z equals to 1. So, that means that could be one upper half or x equals to 0 till x equals to 1. So, that can be another upper half. So, any uh, on any one of the upper half basically and um, in this case uh, to do that first of all uh, to verify actually the Stokes theorem we uh, write the statement. So, by Stokes theorem what do we have? We have uh, line integral f dot dr equals to surface integral curl of f dot n ds right. So, we have to so that left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So, let us start with the left hand side. So, it is line integral f dot dr. So, here c is the boundary in the x y plane and uh, uh, we, we are considering basically z equals to 0 part. So, z equals to 0 to z equals to 1 and if uh, c is the boundary then in, in x y plane then it is basically that circle right. So, that is that is basically the circle and if you walk along that circle then uh, in the anti clockwise direction then your surface is falling on the left hand side. So, that makes sense. Um, so, uh, let me write uh, one or two lines before I actually calculate this uh, line integral. So, in order to do that, 
So, in order to do that the boundary, so let us write the boundary C of the surface S is the circle in x y plane of radius unity and center origin and uh, the parametric representation of that circle would be x equals to cos t, y equals to sin t and z equals to 0. So, now the line integral and uh, t is basically where t is between 0 to 2 pi. All right. So, now we have line integral f dot d r. So, f is basically um, 2 x dot d r. d r is basically d x i plus d y j plus d z k. Now, if we take the dot product, then this will be basically two x minus y d x since z equals to zero and d z is zero. So, here D, uh, z will be 0 because on the curve C we have taken z, uh, z as uh, 0, right. So, on the curve C we have taken uh, z as 0. So, we substitute z equals to 0 here and here and we substitute dz equals to also 0. So, ultimately we will get 2 x minus y dot uh, times d x. So, that is what we are obtaining here and now um, we substitute x equals to cos t and y equals to sin t. So, this will be t running from 0 to 2 pi 2 x means uh, 2 cos t minus sin t d x d t times d t. So, this is sorry this is t. So, t running from 0 to 2 pi 2 cos t minus sin t and uh, x is um, cos t. So, d x will be minus of sin t. So, I can write the minus sign here sin t d t and then we multiply this sin t here. So, this will be 2 sin t cos t. So, that means uh, sin 2 t and then we will have a minus minus plus 2 sin square t which can be written as sorry this is d t. So, which can be written as uh, 1 minus cos 2 t. So, that cos and sin formula we have to remember and then you substitute the value then you substitute those uh, uh, calculations here. So, this will be t running from 0 to 2 pi we have sin 2 t minus half 1 minus cos 2 t. So, we just adjust a 2 here d t and then we integrate uh, term by term and ultimately we will obtain pi right. So, ultimately we will obtain pi. Now, we calculate uh, now we calculate the right hand side. So, first of all we have to calculate curl of f. So, this we have i j k and uh, and uh, f would be 2 x minus y as of y z square minus of y square z. So, when we do the partial derivative we will ultimately obtain a k because the rest of the term will be either cancelled out or they will either be 0. So, they do not play any role and therefore, the component of i j and k will be uh, i j will be 0 and k will be 1. So, that is why we are only writing the vector um, unit vector k. And n is the unit outward drawn normal on the surface S. So, if um, 
our and c and c is the curve basically that is my enclosing that surface and if n is the outward drawn normal so you have a sphere on the upper half of the z axis and then if you have a unit drawn normal n then you can choose k axis itself as your unit normal right because k axis is normal to the to this uh, to that uh, surface of the sphere and uh, we can actually choose it instead of calculating we can actually choose k as the unit vector and therefore we can write if s1 is the plane region is the plane region bounded by the circle c then So, basically we have this as a surface integral over s 1 let us say we have gradient of curl of f dot n, n is basically k and now this thing is also k. So, k dot k d s therefore, k dot k is 1 this will be surface integral over s k square and the, since k is the unit vector we can write k dot k as 1. So, this is basically d s and uh, su surface integral over s 1 and uh, this can be written as d s pi r square r is 1. So, then we have basically pi. So, our left hand side was pi and our right hand side is also pi. Therefore, uh, say if the left hand side and right hand side are both same, then by Stokes theorem, we can be able to say that uh, the given integral uh, or the given problem satisfies the Stokes theorem, which means that the surface integral and the line integral both are same or both hold true. All right. So, that is uh, one way we can solve our uh, problems in, uh, in, uh, in Stokes theorem, uh, motivated from Stokes theorem. Similarly, you can have several other problems um, from uh, se several other problems from uh, Stokes uh, theorem, where you either convert your, uh, your surface integral into a line integral, or you can convert your line integral into a surface integral, and um, just um, just calculate either one of them. So, if one expression is given to be complicated, try to use the Stokes theorem to convert it into a simpler one, and uh, see if you can calculate that one or not. All right. So, um, let me uh, give you a quick recap of the syllabus. So, before I proceed any further, so we started. Uh, so, we uh, initially um, we started this uh, integral and vector calculus course from uh, Riemann integral or from the concepts of Riemann integral. So, um, I know that in your plus two uh, or um, even when you were preparing for um, other competitive exams, you must have learnt uh, a little bit about uh, indefinite integral, then definite integral. Those are all very nice form of integrals or sometimes they are also called as Newtonian integral. So, where you look for the antiderivative and uh, you either by method of substitution or whatever methods are unknown, you just use them to calculate the integral. So, more or less since you were familiar with the integral of a function uh, or integral of single variable. Uh, we started with uh, concepts of Riemann integral. I gave you introduction of partition concepts of Riemann integral, Riemann integrable function, uh, fundamental theorem of integral calculus, uh, mean value theorems and things like that. And based on which we will also provide you some examples uh, or assignments to practice. Then we looked into reduction formula and uh, derivation of different types of reduction formula. So, sometimes you may be asked to um, calculate sin to the power 13 x dx. So, then in that case you just have to use that reduction formula for sin to the power n x dx and uh, from that formula you can be able to calculate whatever power is given there. So, uh, the reduction formula is a very nice tool where you just uh, see if there is some kind of uh, 
repetitive formula there so that you can general come to a generalized formula and uh, then we learnt about improper and uh, uh, proper and improper integral uh, their convergence we also learnt about some tests to do the convergence all right and uh, afterwards we moved to beta and gamma function we looked into their properties we learnt about uh, differentiation under the integral sign leibniz theorem and things like that afterwards uh, uh, we looked into double integral, we also learnt about change of order of integration, Jacobian transformation, um, then we moved uh, to the applied path, a pa part of uh, integral calculus where we learnt about uh, rectification and uh, surface integral, we learnt about volume integrals um, and uh, several other th um, types of volume integrals. Uh, the center of gravity and moment of inertia. I did not cover that part uh, because uh, from integral calculus perspective I think uh, it, it might go a little bit in the different direction. So, uh, if any one of you are interested you can look into those references. Um, I was since I was focused to also cover the vector calculus part I gave my attention to those two topics. So, these are the two topics which uh, I initially proposed, but uh, then over the time I realized that this might lead to um, problems from a different parts of uh, mechanics or something. So, um, it is better that we should not do it at the moment, but if any one of you are interested you should just look into those books and you will be able to find these two topics there. And then we uh, moved to our vector calculus part where we looked into the limit continuity, uh, differenceability of a vector function, uh, arc length, uh, partial derivative of a vector function, directional derivative, gradient, divergence and curl uh, operators. So, we learned about different types of uh, notions in vector calculus. We also practiced uh, some examples. Then we uh, learnt about uh, tangent, normal and binormal and then uh, we derived one of the important formulas in vector calculus which is the seret frenet formula. Uh, we also looked into the uh, applied part of vector calculus uh, where it is used and how to derive some equations of motions and things like that. Um, we then looked into uh, three important theorems like uh, Gauss divergence theorem, uh, Stokes theorem and Green's theorem. So, up until previous class I did try to cover um, Green's theorem, uh, Gauss theorem and uh, today we are uh, we learnt about uh, Stokes theorem. We also tried to solve one example uh, motivated from the Stokes theorem and uh, in our 12th week or in our last week I thought uh, maybe I could practice more examples from integral calculus uh, or vector calculus, but uh, due to the time constraint um, uh, unfortunately we cannot be able to practice more examples. But uh, I would suggest you to look into those books, there you will find plenty of examples for you to practice and uh, work out uh, problems uh, from our assignment sheet that will also help you uh, uh, get a sense of this topic. And um, uh, this is what we tried to cover in a 12 week uh, session actually, although I personally feel that it might need a little bit more time to, uh, to cover these two topics in detail. Um, however, we tried our best to do that. So, um, just uh, go through these lectures and uh, try to get a sense, a feeling of the topic, uh, whatever we learned and talked about. And if you have any questions or doubts, uh, you, we, I, I believe we have a weekly uh, sessions uh, where we can clear out the doubts. Um, also, if you have any questions, uh, you can just go into my home page and write me an email. I will be, uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions and uh, try to help you with your queries. Uh, so, you do not have to just um, worry about things, uh, you do not have to just uh, worry about the fact that you can only contact me via this uh, NPTEL format or something. So, if you have any in general any questions or doubts on uh, integral calculus or vector calculus or which you could not be able to follow in this, uh, in this lecture series then just write me an email, uh, go to the IIT Kharagpur website, try to find out my profile, there you find my email address and write me an email and I will be more than happy to answer your queries. Um, so, from my side I try to cover as many topics as I could and uh, I hope uh, you um, will be able to um, learn these things uh, more clearly and um, I look forward to your questions, your queries and um, yeah.
uh, good luck. Um, since we still have uh, at least uh, 5 minutes left, so let me just uh, uh, state uh, one more example from Stokes theorem and then we will move, uh, I will close this, uh, close this lecture. So, let me go back to my all right. So, since we have one more uh, some time, we can focus on one more example. So, uh, example 2 from uh, Stokes theorem. So, verify Stokes theorem. Uh, f is equals to x square plus y square times i minus 2 x y j uh, taken around the rectangle bounded by x equals to plus minus a and y equals to 0 and y equals to b. So, this is just one more example for us to practice. It is really not that much complicated. It is a lengthy problem, but it is really not complicated. So, if we want to draw this, uh, this rectangle, we can just do that uh, x equals to minus a x equals to a and uh, this is our x axis, this is our y axis and then we have y equals to 0 and we have y equals to b sorry. So, so this is our x equals to a and uh, our rectangle, this is our rectangle. So, we our curve c will move like this. So, this is our curve c all right and the equation of this line is x equals to a, this line is y equals to b, this line is uh, x equal, uh, y equals to 0 and this is x equals to minus a. So, these are the four equations and um, let us call it as uh, a, b, c and d. So, first of all in order to verify uh, we have to calculate the surface integral and the surface integral can be calculated by, so we have so, we first need to calculate curl of f. So, curl of f can be calculated using that uh, determinant form uh, which is basically i, uh, j and k and then we have del del x, del del y and del del z and uh, we can write the x component x square plus y square, y component 2 x y and then z component is 0. If you calculate this determinant, then ultimately you will be able to obtain minus 4 y k and uh, a unit normal since uh, this whole curve uh, this uh, sorry this whole surface lies in the x y plane um, an outward drawn unit normal would be n equals to k all right because z axis is obviously perpendicular to the x y plane and uh, you can choose n as k. So, we choose or we have or uh, we get n equals to k since the given surface is in x y plane. So, therefore, if we want to calculate the surface integral curl of f dot n d s. So, curl of f is basically our uh, minus of 4 y k dot product with k d s and uh, this is basically minus of 4 y. So, this is basically minus of 4 s y d s and uh, d s is that surface element in x y plane. So, this can be written as minus of 4 surface integral uh, x. Uh, so, x is varying from minus a to plus a and y is varying from 0 to b y d s is basically d x d y and uh, if we integrate this whole thing then in that case uh, we first integrate with respect to y. So, this will be minus of uh, 4 times b square by 2 and then we integrate with respect to x. So, this will be um, so this will be um, so this will be uh, 2 a y. So, this will be ultimately uh, 2 a. So, that means we will have minus of 4 a b square. So, that is the value of the surface integral. Now, for the line integral for the line integral c here we have to be a little bit careful because our curve is composed of four curves or 
curve C is composed of four mini curves. So this is our C1, this is our C2, this is our C3 and this is our C4. So that means we can write this integral over C as the union of uh, C1, C2, C3, C4 and uh, union of C1, C2, C3, C4 can be written as sum of integrals on C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4. So we can write C1 f dot dr plus C2 f dot dr plus C3 f dot dr plus C4 f dot dr. So we have to evaluate all of these four integrals, right? So when you first evaluate over C1, you have to take care of the fact that the equation on, on C1, we have y equals to 0, then dy is 0 and um, you just uh, and you just integrate from minus a to plus a. So, that will be the value on C1. Similarly, when you are integrating on C2, you have to take uh, x equals to a and y is varying from 0 to b. So, uh, so, dx will be 0, x is a. So, we calculate the second integral. Uh, similarly, we calculate third and fourth, then you sum all of them and you will be able to see that the required answer is minus 4 a b square and therefore, your Stokes theorem will be verified. So, this was uh, one more example where you could be able to verify the Stokes theorem. So, I hope um, uh, these examples have cleared out your doubts uh, based on Stokes theorem and um, um, I, I believe we, uh, we have exhausted the time. So, I will uh, stop here for now and um, I hope you enjoyed this course and uh, I will look forward to your questions, uh, your suggestions, uh, your remarks if you have anything uh, based on this course and uh, I will try to answer them, I will try to uh, reply to you as soon as possible and of course I am always reachable via email so do not hes hesitate to contact me. So um, thank you for your attention and uh, have a good time.